It's been about two months since the last update on the CNC build here, because as it turns out, it takes forever to get shit done to this thing. <laughs> but it has been coming along lately, and in fact, I've been making stuff on the machine in the meanwhile, and it's been pretty nice. So today I have some updates for you, uh, both on the machine and then also on the shop in general. So first off, uh, since my last video, I have managed to hit 100 subs here on YouTube. And that's kind of cool, you know, like, it's not that big a deal, just 100 subscribers, it doesn't really matter that much to me. But I am also just a guy, you know, working in a shop. You know, this thing, the YouTube thing is not my job, the whole shop thing is not my job, it's just a hobby. Uh, you know, so for people to show that they appreciate the uh, effort that goes in and that it's, you know, possibly helping them out, that means a lot to me. And I just want to say, uh, you know, for those of you tuning in, I appreciate you and thank you. That's all. Now, uh, as for the updates on the machine, I've got a bunch. I'm going to try to cover them all briefly here and then uh, give them all videos with further details later on. So starting off with this air compressor, if uh, I hit the regulator here, just a smidge and put out a little bit of air in this hose that then flows over here this 55 gallon drum pressurizes the air in the top pushes the water down through this plumbing and then that fills up the water basin right here and when that's as, uh, as full as I want it I can come down here hit the uh, ball valve turn the regulator off and then Release the hose, that air bleeds off, and the basin stays as full as it left it. And when I'm done with that, I can uh, hit that ball valve again, and let gravity drain it off for me. So, uh, yeah, it's been pretty nice. Uh, before I had a bunch of five-gallon buckets I was dumping in there, then draining back in. Oh my god, that was bad. <laughs> but this is, you know, pretty quick and pretty, pretty painless. Now, uh, I'm pretty sure the 55 gallon drum will work when it comes to the full four by five foot table at the end. Um, but we'll see if my math is right or not. I know I will have to at least put it on its side to get the full capacity of it and also to um, store it under the table. But if it ends up being a bit too short, well, I can just live with it for one, right? <laughs> or I can uh, always get a pair of 30 gallon uh, barrels, which will fit better and give me a bit more capacity to get, you know, the basin full to the brim. Uh, at least for the meanwhile, I've got this smaller basin and it's doing a fine job. You might have noticed though, this basin is different from the one I showed before. <laughs> Cause last time I had this on video, uh, I had a particle board basin that I've made and then fiberglassed over and it had a few leaks. And those leaks then got moldy and I had to throw it out. <laughs> like, you know, what do you, what do you do, right? Uh, yeah, it was a good experiment. I tried. Um, I'm not sure if I'll do that same method now for the full water basin or, or what, but uh, at least for a practice run, uh, it was a good, good experience learning how to use fiberglass. As poorly as I did it, that's how you learn, right? Uh, and I'm glad I did the small one before I did the big one and botched that one up, you know, from the get-go too. <laughs> so at least for the time being, I've got uh, this plastic basin. Went to Costco. I got a plastic storage crate for like eight dollars. Cut it short. So it's a reasonable size and it's working well enough for now, as long as I'm only cutting out small parts. And uh, with the four or five inches of water I put in here, I have not yet had any hot slag uh, burn through the bottom, which, you know, fingers crossed that uh, that will stay that way. <laughs> you know, everything is cooled off sufficiently before it hits the bottom, uh, you know, of this plastic barrel or basin, whatever. Let's see. Uh, as for other add-ons... I've got ohmic sensing now for the torch, which has been an absolute godsend. Basically, it's a little signal wire here with a uh, spring clip that touches the uh, shield on the plasma torch, and then another sensor wire uh, down there connecting the ground clamp. And they come over here with a pair of 50 cent Chinese relays that then go back to the parallel port breakup board. And these relays disconnect both halves of the circuit uh, while the plasma is cutting. So that with the right uh, HAL configurations and the right G-code, I can turn them into a probe uh, before every cut. And that basically just resets the Z equals zero mark. So at least uh, for small cuts and for piercing, my, I can be guaranteed the torch is at the right height. Now, 
when I do bigger cuts, like cutting out a piece at the end. Uh, that might not work so well, just because, uh, you know, the torch moves a far distance from where you did the pierce. So, you know, for a hole or a slot or something, it's in a small area, so the plate isn't going to shift or, you know, change in Z height all that much. But for longer pieces or, you know, bigger cuts over wider areas of plate, you're going to have more variance. Just because this work surface here is not flat, you know. Surprise, surprise, that, it's, it's just not flat. It will never be flat. In fact, even the steer cutting might, uh, might warp a little bit. Like you might see here, that's going to sprung up just from the, uh, the stress from the, the heat and stuff in the steel. So uh, at least for small things, the torch high control, or the, sorry, the omic sensing uh, makes it work. And then for longer cuts, like taking the piece out at the very end, I still have the manual torch high control I showed before that I can use to drop the torch up and down while cutting to make sure I don't crash the thing into the plate. Now, that's not ideal again. Uh, I am working on a full-blown torch high controller uh, with that Arduino abomination right down there but it's not done yet. Uh, it's coming along. I did solve at least one major hurdle of the day that I'll, I'll put in another video uh, immediately after this. I'm gonna shoot that one before I forget how the whole diagnostic process worked. But uh, it's not, not there just yet. Let's see, uh, as for other updates, I now have uh, cable carriers on the side and the back, which make the whole thing a little bit less janky. You know, it's always, always a good thing. Uh, <laughs> And I've got a laser diode I slapped in the back here to give me a crosshairs so I can more easily align the plate uh, and get the torch to the right spot before cutting. That way I'm just minimizing waste on pieces of plate. Um, and it's kind of nifty, you know, because lasers, right? <laughs> you know, and it's nice too that with, uh, with Linux CNC and how configurations and just the general, you know, goodness of like open source, do what you want attitude of Linux, that was pretty damn easy to set up you know for for three bucks then for a little laser diode i have a, a new feature on the plasma cutter and again that'll be another video later on as i start making a tutorial for all this how configuration stuff i'm working on working on it just it this shit takes time it, it just takes time now uh let's see as for stuff i've been cutting with this thing uh i have for one a new workbench Ta-da! If you'd seen glimpses of the old workbench in prior videos, that was just a steel box on sawhorses. Definitely a, a pretty ghetto workbench. But this, this is like, it's actually nice, you know? <laughs> and the, uh, the brackets here in the corners are the first things I cut on the CNC machine that were not a test cut. So we got like an artistic curve down here. That was a, a spline. Yeah, I used a spline, yeah. And then uh, fillets on these corners here. And that's like a few more seconds of work to make this look way nicer, which I never would have done were I cutting these by hand. <laughs> you know, I just would not do that if cutting them by hand. But on the CNC program, you know, on FreeCAD, it's like another minute of work. And then that gets replicated on all four brackets, which is really the advantage of the CNC stuff, you know? And I, uh, I made this workbench uh, and tacked on a thing on the side here for my clamps and stuff like that. A power strip over here for uh, powering my grinder and all those other tools. And then I uh, put some shelving on there by just stealing the top uh, chunk of a Harbor Freight tool chest and chucking it in there because I'm kind of a lazy ass. Uh, <laughs> and I got room at the bottom here for probably my favorite storage solution, the uh, Costco Cardboard Avocado Crate. Yeah, so you get these at Costco for uh, the price of free. Uh, they're a good size, they stack, they're durable. Uh, they're made of cardboard, so they don't get too beat up. You can recycle or compost them. And uh, yeah, they're easy to replace again because they're free. <laughs> so it's probably a toss up between these avocado boxes and banana boxes, uh, both at Costco. But they're just, they are great for uh, simple storage around your shop. Just uh, FYI. Now, uh, this is kind of cool too. I've got a little bender I made for the bench vise. Just slides off and on right there. Now, uh, all these little bits took a bit of extra polishing to uh, make them work because, as you can see that, yeah, see those grind marks there? Because the uh, consumables I used to cut these out were pretty much trash by that point. So the cuts came out, you know, very beveled. But uh, a minute or two of hand polishing with a grinder afterwards to make these fit is still far, far better 
then cutting all of them by hand, and then spending a lot more time hand finishing them afterwards to make them fit. So again, this CAD stuff, it's, it's been a lot of work, but it is slowly paying off. Um, and the capacity on that guy isn't anything, you know, super, super high, like 14 gauge, it'll bend pretty easily. Eighth of an inch depends how, how wide it is, like two inches still do pretty easily. Uh, you got a bit of a limitation here with the, the column on the vise, but overall it's, it's pretty quick for light duty stuff and pretty handy. Um, let's see for other things. I guess uh, on this Stein baffle here, which was a, a subject of my earlier videos, I've gone and replaced the, uh, the old hardboard uh, baffle. I don't want to pop it open right now, but uh, you can see here, one of the older ones I made, that was a little bit too small, but uh, basically recut that and then put a few bolt holes in it. So now rather than having it uh, supported by blocks screwed into here, it's uh, hanging from a few pieces of ready rod bolted in from the top and uh, works just as well as the old one and it gets out of the way when you pull this lid off. I also put a, a big old washer on the top of this, you know, like a, a 10 inch wide piece of plate that I've plasma cut all the bolt holes in uh, just to uh, keep this lid from getting all warped because I found on the last one with the small plastic washer I had underneath this guy wasn't enough and with enough, uh, you know, time and torquing of this bit here, the whole lid got kind of wavy. Now with a new lid and a new washer, so it's very stiff, won't have any problems. Uh, over here in yet another avocado box, <laughs> right? Can you tell I'm a millennial? Uh, <laughs> we've got uh, this guy here, which is a big steel box I made with uh, perforations here for bending. So when that uh, little bench thing isn't enough to bend, you know, if something is too big or too heavy duty or whatever, you can cut perforations on a plasma cutter. And then I made a five-sided box, made a lid for the top of it, and then epoxied in a couple of microwave oven transformers. So those guys, plus a 30 amp, five volt power supply, uh, basically draws 14 amps on each microwave oven transformer, and then gives you a hell of a lot of clamping force uh, you know, as an electromagnet. So you can drop down stuff like this steel plate after you've cut it, uh, hit the switch, it sticks down, polish the dross off, release it, flip it over, do it again. Very fast, very nice. Uh, this here is not yet done. I'm gonna make a second lower half of the box that will house the power supply and then some wiring too. So I can make the foot switch here act as the activator for the magnet. And then that will just, oh, that, that'll be top notch. Uh, as for other things I got in here, there's a little bit of gym equipment I'm working on. And then uh, these guys are racks for holding bikes up on your wall. I've already got two of them upstairs for my road bikes. I'm making a few more for friends. And, you know, I'll show you these guys. Why not? Now you tell me that isn't sexy, right? <laughs> so with the, uh, the longer, thinner piece you saw before, give that a couple of bends on the uh, bench vice thing. And then it acts as a clip to hold on your pedal. And then the wider one uh, acts as a shelf for your tires. So the uh, tall back here keeps you from scuffing up the, uh, the wall when you put it in place. Uh, the slots give you some adjustment, both uh, for up and down. And then a kind of a course adjustment for left and right when you can uh, you know, move um, between different groups of slots for the holes you've already put in the wall. And then the uh, bends here on these tabs help keep the tire in place and also act as a uh, a bit of a catch, like mud, dirt, water, that kind of stuff. That might be on the tires, so you don't get them all off the floor. Uh, yeah, so I did have something like that, which I did by hand about a year ago or so, last summer. Uh, but these ones now, they just look far more professional, and they're far easier to make because I have them on the CNC. You know, these two I popped out, a, you know, I forget how long, but it was much faster than the old ones I did by hand. And now I can make more of them too for friends. And hell, you know, I might even make some to list on eBay or something, you know, sell them and uh, put the CNC to work, right? It's uh, basically like having an unpaid intern in your shop who's actually good at doing stuff. <laughs> you know, having it work there while you're working on other stuff, it's, it's a very good feeling the moment you can let your CNC run even halfway unattended. It's, it just warms my heart and soul. That's all. Uh, yeah, now I guess... The green bike here, uh, you might recognize that from an earlier video I did on FreeCAD. 
and uh, haven't had a broken derailleur hanger, I tried to print off to replace. Uh, that ended up being an utter failure, just for those who are curious, and it snapped in a heartbeat. So yeah, uh, what that does mean though, is now I have an excuse to build an aluminum router mill to remake that part and get that bike up and running. I already have this one now, which is my main bike, but uh, you know, wouldn't hurt to have a backup one as well. Uh, let's see. Now, I did mention in the title of this video that I have a new shop. I already showed the metal shop downstairs and the bike shop up here, and those are both the same. So what's the new one? Well, that is up upstairs, <laughs> where uh, basically the old metal shop was formerly a bedroom I was renting out to people. And uh, this room was the same. But eventually I got tired of renting, uh, and while the money was nice, I decided that my peace and quiet and sanity were nicer. So, yeah, I had, uh, had that room turned into my shop, had this room basically vacant, just being storage for uh, some gymnastics mats I happened to have because, you know, anyway. Uh, and I decided to make this one into the workspace for electronics and things specifically to that. Uh, it's still a mess because obviously I just kind of chuck stuff up here. But I've also moved the 3D printer in here and uh, the latest addition, a K40 laser. These are the, the really cheap Chinesium ones that are like $300 and change. Uh, definitely not fancy, but surprisingly good for the money. You know, straight out of the box, without any configurations, anything extra on there, I was already able to make some, uh, you know, surprisingly decent PCBs. Take a look at that there. See that? So the way this thing works is uh, you sketch up your PCB in whatever uh, Fritzing, uh, KiCad, or Eagle, whatever you want to use. Um, then you paint a piece of copper clad board, you etch away the paint where you want to remove the copper using the laser, then you etch away the copper using ferric chloride, and then you remove the paint using acetone, and through that really roundabout method, you do end up with a halfway passable PCB. This is uh, one of the THC ones I was working on before. Uh, the circuit is totally wrong. You just ignore that. It was, yeah, it was an experiment that did not work. But the proof of concept for this did work, and that is very exciting. Now, when I do more of these later, I gotta, gotta work on drilling my through holes, because, yeah, just did not do a, any practice, basically. And uh, maybe clear more, uh, clear more copper out around each of the traces, give myself a bit more buffer room. But the, uh, the concept is sound. And eventually, I'll go back and make a... Uh, ooh, better uh, enclosure for this thing and have a you know fully functioning uh, you know laser and engraver like the uh, the physics anonymous guys you seen their videos they took one of these and then basically uh, cannibalized it for the bulb and made a very nice engraver out of that and I hope to do the same at some point I've also already got the uh, motor kit down there for the uh, aluminum mill to make that that one part for the bike because <laughs> that's definitely the most efficient way to go about this you know uh, and I had to buy another kit anyway because I uh, happened to burn out the parallel port board on the plasma machine with some crappy G-code I wrote by mistake. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, you can buy the parallel port breakup board separately, but if you buy them as a kit, you basically can throw them for free. So I took that as an excuse to just buy another kit and, you know, keep pushing myself to make more and more CNC stuff and build out the whole army of robots. Yeah. <laughs> see. Uh, and in... Other updates, I guess. Uh, another cool thing is I bought a kiln recently. I haven't gotten it yet, but uh, I was online shopping around for a used compressor because I have a I have a shock compressor, not the pancake one you saw before, but a, a real size shock compressor. But it's only like nine or ten CFM at ninety psi, so it can just barely keep up with the CNC plasma. So I was looking to upgrade that, but instead of a compressor, I found a kiln. And, you know, I just, I couldn't pass it up, basically. At the, the price, I just couldn't say no. Uh, it supposedly goes to 2000 Fahrenheit, which would be enough for aluminum and brass, which means I can then, like, 3D print out molds and then do, uh, you know, molding that way, and that would just be sick. You know, or I could possibly make, like, brownies really, really, really fast, and that would also be awesome. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I guess that's... That's all the updates we got for now. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for more, I guess. Peace.